All Things Motoring International is owned and brought to you by SA's most trusted online vehicle platform, Change Cars. Our name says it all. Whether you're looking to sell, need advice, need finance, or need insurance, Change Cars has you covered. Coming up this week on All Things Motoring International. We're back in Cape Town with one of South Africa's most unique events, Drift City. And Michael visits Screen, a company that helps give you peace of mind when it comes to screening your next pride and joy. But first, let's go burn some rubber. It's Heritage Day, and what better way to spend it than at the Heritage site? But this isn't any ordinary Heritage Day at any ordinary site. This is Drift City, and it's been eagerly awaited because the event's been cancelled multiple times. But it's here today, it's here now. Let's go check out Drift City Cape Town. Drift City has been on quite a hiatus, with the last event being back in 2019. Drift cars come in all different shapes and sizes, but the main criteria is that it's got to be rear-wheel drive. Now, I know Mike doesn't like these 200 SXs like that one over there, but man, I do like them. You're not going to see MX-6 drifting over here, but what you will see is S14s, S13s, 350Zs, and incredibly powerful cars like the one at the back here. has it that there's a storm coming in which is why I'm all layered up like this but these guys here are getting their own bit of stormy weather at the moment the car's been running fine all day long but all of a sudden it's flooded so we're gonna have to wait and see how the guys from Team Fury do as they head into the practice runs today So after they sorted out the spark plugs, Dan from Fury is back on the start line and this is the start of his day. The first practice of many. And then it but I'm standing here with Dan. Uh, Dan, well, yeah. what's happening with today? Qualifying just finished, how's it going? Yeah, so the car's running well. Um, we lost the handbrake through the one bend, but we sorted it out. Luckily, we got it one more time anyway, so nice. we re-qualified. How are the nerves in a competition like this? It's hard to say, because like as drivers, we enjoy it. it. This is like going to drive. So there's a bit extra excitement because of the size of the crowd. But for us, you know, the driving is what matters and that's what we enjoy. Oh, that's a great attitude. The driving's what matters. Yeah. So let's enjoy some driving. The drama continues here as Joey Governor, who's come all the way, how's it, Joey, from Durban. And uh, Joey has drifted all over the country, finds himself in Cape Town, but now he's having some issues. Hopefully they can sort it out and get him back out on track. So as you can see, Joey managed to get his car back to the pit lane and he was helped by other drivers. That's what motorsport is all about, jumping in to see where you can assist. I'm gonna go do the same and see if I can find out what's going on. This is what it's all about. Joey Governor on the start line gets the car sorted out like a champ. Now, 
it's time to drive. Joey, you finally got the car running. We were waiting with bated breath. I didn't drive this uh, whole long journey to get up here to Cape Town and not drive. Exactly. And you guys did in the end, what was the problem? It was the main fuse that blew. We were not sure what's the actual fault, but we've just like bypassed it for now. It's difficult to get out of that fix the car mode, to drive the car mode. There's a switch that needs to, it's, it's really tricky. But especially with drifting. Eh? And especially with this sort of thing, because this is not just an open track where you just go and play. This is a track you've got to be technical, you've got to think about it. And motorsport obviously is not possible without sponsors. You've got No Sweat Racing, MRG3, Autosport Empire. I mean, they all help to make this thing happen. Of course, you've got a drift school as well. Uh, yes, uh, that, that's my main thing now because uh, as you know, in the motorsport field, especially in the drifting field, it's very expensive and sponsors are very far and few yeah. and in between to even try and find, nice. maybe even create a drift team at a later stage. Oh, who knows? Watch out for the Joey Governor Drift Team and go check them out in case they're in if you want to get some drift lessons. Coming up after the break, we talk to the founder and owner of Screen about purchasing with peace of mind. Drift School Car Before Class. Drift School Car After Class. Are you looking to sell? Visit Change Cars and click on the Selling tab. Up next, we head to Joburg and Michael visits Screen. The meeting place was the boutique hotel, Little Tuscany, the owners of which kindly offered us the use of their elegant courtyard in the leafy suburbs of Bryanston. Buyer's remorse, hold that thought, or even better still, lose that thought. I don't think there's a single viewer out there who hasn't had that angst when they're going to look at a used car. Today, we're speaking to Mike Schliebach from Cape Town. Mike, you've come up with a concept that I believe is absolutely extraordinary. Screen, tell us about it. Thanks Mike, yeah. Um, I developed Screen a couple of years ago. And, After a uh, personal experience, I believe. I was in the market for a second-hand car. Um, found my, my dream vehicle up here in Joburg and landed up flying from Cape Town on on a level four lockdown flight and um, that wasn't challenging i'm sure no it was <laughs> yeah, exactly it was uh, difficult to get when i arrived at the dealership the car wasn't there when you see you know the, the advert you know looked legit and uh, the dealership looked legit yes. and uh, it's hard to tell from t you know 1500 kilometers away of course so of course they kept telling me the car was coming uh, and in the process they tried to sell me something else after an hour i was like you know i've got to get out of here Ordered an Uber, very fortunate in that uh, the Uber driver that I happened to get was, a, was an ex-used car dealer, yeah. or specialist, a gentleman by the name of Ronald Nkondwa. Ronald ultimately helped me find the vehicle Amazing. that I was looking for. And uh, his parting words to me when, when, when I left him were, you know, if you ever need me to check out a car for you up here again, you just wow. call me, you have my number. And was that the light switch moment? Yeah, I mean, I spent, you know, 15, 18 hours driving back down to Cape Town and, you know, just pieced all of those things together and also did some internet searches and realized there was actually nothing in the market for like sure. it. Now, let's talk about Screen itself. Whether you're buying a car, a motorbike, a caravan, a boat, can Screen help us? Absolutely. We don't just screen vehicles. Right. We screen uh, or you know cars. We screen uh, classic cars. We do caravans. We do trailers, and we do boats. The process. I see the car I like on any of the online platforms. Anyway, I'm buying it from a friend. How do I go about getting hold of Screen? So you just got to find the vehicle you want us to inspect. And can you, this be private from a dealer private, anywhere? Any vehicle that right. is for sale, essentially, we will go and inspect. For Obviously, sure. it's got to be in a safe area. But screening, we've got somebody else here who does screening. Who are we going to be talking to today? Today, we're chatting to Alan Matson. Um, a young man. He's a young man with, with a little bit uh, inexperienced. <laughs> yeah, no, he's uh, he's a long history in the in the automotive industry, right. and um, he's our most senior inspector. 
He's been on the on the platform from day one. I'm honoured. Uh, you said he's the most uh, senior inspector. We got the best today. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Ultimately, any product that is used or not used comes down to pricing. I looked at your pricing and I am positively shocked at how low it is. Tell us what the typical cost is of a screen. Car screen will cost you 895 Rand. To give you an idea, if you are financing a thousand Rand on your purchase, 20 Rand per month, that is what it will add to your HP. What is your most expensive screen? Our most expensive screen is the dealer car screen, right. and the classic car screens at 995. They come with a more, more comprehensive checklist, sure. so it takes the screen a bit longer to, cool. to get through it. So now I'm a private individual, I say to you, I've seen you got a dealer screen, 995. Can I have that as a private individual? Will you do that for me? Absolutely. Each of the different categories are specific to those categories. Of course. So we try and encourage the car screen is more specific to people that want to buy a second-hand car that are, yeah. they don't really know. All they want to know is that it's a good car or it's not a good car. The dealer car screen is much more comprehensive. Right. It asks questions that dealers want to know about, you know, and it's just more, there's a lot more detail and uh, yeah. Awesome. So you take a town like Johannesburg, Cape Town, Durban, they are mega cities. You take Nelspreit, Bloemfontein, Port Elizabeth, East London. Those are cities in South Africa that are big. I want to do a screen in East London. Can I do it? You can. Yeah. Awesome. I don't want to do one. You want to do one. Let's go speak to the screener. Looking forward to meeting Alan. Cheers, Mike. When looking for protection from the sun, we all know we use sunscreen. Fortunately, when looking for protection when buying a used car, we now have screen. Alan, lovely to have you here. Behind us, four vehicles. Two of them are Porsches. Guess what? We're not going to look at them. Why? You don't need to look at Porsches. They're always perfect. Porsche centers take care of that for you. But there are two cars behind you that we are going to look at. An older one and a slightly newer one. 1997 Ford Falcon. 2008 Land Rover Discovery. A car like this, 27 years old. At face value, you've had a quick look at it. What is your initial impression? Looking at it just, just briefly, it seems to be in very good nick of for its age. It's only done 122,000. I'm looking forward to taking it out on the road and see if there's anything else that we might pick up. So now that's interesting for me. You said initially it looks good. The focus is on taking it out on the road. When you're buying a car for 50, 60,000 Rand, 27 years old, be reasonable. The bodywork, etc. You expect it to be a little bit uh, worn and worse for wear, but mechanically is absolutely critical. Let's focus on the mechanicals. What do you look for on a car like this? We'll take it out. We'll first look for oil leaks. Ah, I've got a question for you. What's the easiest way to find an oil leak on a car? Apart from climbing underneath <laughs> and looking at it, I'll just move it forward and have, have a look at what's on the pavement. If there's oil on the floor, your car's got an oil leak, where it's coming from, who cares, you're not going to fix it to be honest. Water leaks as well. Water leaks, make sure it's not the aircon, but absolutely. So we get this car out on the road and I'm actually looking forward to that. And I just imagine something like this. I imagine you have not driven a 1997 Ford Falcon before. I haven't actually. He's ever driven it, I'm not confident he's going to know how to drive it, I'll drive it. Very good. So far, the gearbox is great. That's what I'm really impressed about, the age of the vehicle and the way she's driving. Very quiet. There's no negative feedback to the steering. There's no negative feedback to the accelerator. No vibrations. Nothing at all. Maybe a little bit of noise in the suspension, but that we can look at. But for the age of the vehicle, very impressed. Next, it was time for Alan to screen the Discovery 3. So I'm always fascinated. Two quick questions. The absolute worst car that was like, oh my God, this car should be in a scrapyard. What have I wasted my fuel to come and look at it at? And the best car, starting with the worst. The worst was a small Renault Clio, which I don't think should have been on the road. Right. My absolute best was a Porsche Cayman S. And what was it about that car? The conditions, the fact that you needed to take it for a three and a half hour test drive just to make sure that you got it 100% right. I think that was, that was the best of it all. It wasn't a new model, right? but I could not find a thing wrong with it. You will never fail to take an opportunity to give a shout out to the Porsche product. The Cayman S, which is fundamentally the same car as a Porsche Boxster, 
it is unbelievable. If you're looking for good value for money, the entry levels of the 2006, 2007 genre today, roughly 250 to 350,000 Rand, you will not find better value. Get in that car, it looks like you're driving a million Rand car stall. Thanks for mentioning Porsche. <laughs> True. Once the screening is done, Alan and the team provide a full report. If there's one saying that resonates with me, foresight is better than hindsight and prevention truly is better than cure. What I've seen today, the product that is screened is exceptional. It is thorough, it is detailed, it is easy to use. Michael, the idea that you have come up with here, I salute you. Alan, seeing you in action was something to behold. I wish you and your team the very best and may this product go from strength to strength. Coming up after the break, we back at Drift City and Ernest talks to some drivers, fans and a judge about the criteria for success. Did you know? For many Drift fans, you can't talk about drifting without mentioning two icons. The unassuming Toyota AE86 and the legendary driver Keiichi Tsuchiya, also known as the Drift King. Keiichi started the world's first official drifting championship called D1 and from there the sport was officially born. Japanese rear-wheel drive cars have always been particularly popular with enthusiasts. But lately, American Muscle and certain German brands have found favor with the fans. Are you looking to sell? Visit Change Cars and click on the Selling tab. I'm standing here with Abdul Sayed from Racing for Change. And the thing about at All Things Motoring, we love to talk about and shine a spotlight on those that are giving back. Abdul, you have been doing exactly that. You guys have been handing out donations for from your motorsport initiative. You guys run gym corners that yeah. donate directly to charities. There's no yeah. fluff in between. And then there's this new initiative that really caught my attention. You guys are teaching skills. Can you tell us a bit more about that? Okay, so, well, thanks for the opportunity, first of all. It's quite simple. The more you give, the more you get. Funny you should say that, Michael says that exact same thing. Yeah, because that's what we're here for. We, ha we need to have a, a, a passion for giving, but we're also having fun at the same time. So yeah. we, we, we have fun with motor cars, we have Jukana, but we're giving back. And just two days ago, we started a welding school. So for me, the first thing I asked you when you told me this is, can they do roll cages? Okay, so that's obviously because we car petrol heads, obviously. That's one of the main things in my brain, is teaching something that's car related. Mechanical, roll cages, panel beating, spray painting, computer boxes. And this is funded? <laughs> yeah, well, through Racing for Change. And we're obviously, hopefully, going to get more sponsors on board. But so the more sponsors we get, the more people we can put through the program. I love and it. and um, there's a, we just the last initiative we did was a, a place called Ihata in Heidefeld. So they, they, were, and they, are, they are home, a shelter for abused women and children. And we're going to talk to them quite a lot because they can determine of the community who can come forward to for the program. Exactly. Yes, because they understand that part of it. And my belief is, you don't have to reinvent the wheel. Mm. You must just partner with the right people. Yeah. The more you give, the more you get, and in that way, you will find contentment and happiness in your life. How did you first, folks? Racing for change. I'm standing here with some drift guy, just the national champion of drifting in South Africa. <laughs> Your nickname literally is some drift guy, isn't it? Yeah, it's because just, you know, I'm just a, I'm a normal guy, it's like <laughs> everyone else, you know, I just do drifting. So. <laughs> so let's get technical here. What's the setup difference for a car like this for today? Uh, softer. Um, so we try and go a little bit softer on the rear. Uh, the front we kind of kept the same. Tire pressure is lower down as well? Tire pressure is low as well. Yeah. So uh, we, play, we played around in practice with uh, rear tire pressures and front tire pressures. Mm -hmm. Actually went harder on the front because we wanted more rolling resistance on the front because we felt like it was bobbing into angle. But the rear wow. we went a lot softer. So wow. just to get a bit more traction out of the corners. And how's it going? Uh, not bad. Uh, qualifying, we, we're definitely in the top half. 
Mm. Uh, I would say maybe top six, but I did a one penalty, so it's two and a half second deduction on that. Okay. Apart from that, it's pretty good. I mean, the car feels good. We, my team did an amazing job yesterday. We worked pretty much full 12 hours prepping the car, new stickers, new everything, nuts and bolts check. But <laughs> um, yeah, we feel ready. I mean, I feel ready. So I'm just here to have fun. It is a windy day, but you know, I enjoy the mother city. There's a great crowd. Yeah. You know, put up a show for them, you know. So, Love it. Yeah. You said everything I wanted to say. <laughs> the next shot is going to be of a rear wheel drive Toyota Auris drifting. Action. When I first started racing, I would bump into this family all the time and surprise, surprise, here we are again. I'm standing with Byron and Andre. Let's start with you, Andre. Uh, what do you think of this event so far? What is this exactly to you? For me, it's like a Gymkhana on steroids. Yeah. I used to do Gymkhanas many years ago with a little caddy bucky and a, and a VW uh, Fox. And uh, well, this is just uh, at a much higher level. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Byron, to you, what is this event to you? Yeah, basically just awesome drifting, the Gymkhana, it just makes it just all around epic event and very well organized. Unfortunately, the wind's not great, but yeah, awesome event and really good fun. Well, as you can see, these are clearly Brad Binder supporters and they PVRing the event, the Brad Binder race, so that they can be here today. Commitment to the cause. I'm standing here with one of the judges, Brendan Gregory. Brendan, what are we looking for here today? I'm just seeing a bunch of cars sliding around, which is cool, but you're looking for something else. Yeah, there's a whole bunch of different like things that we are looking for. The big, the biggest thing is obviously time-based. So the guys are doing obviously a Jim Carnan type style. Um, so therefore, they got to get around obstacles at a certain time. But because it's called Drip City, that's where you are. There we are. That's why I'm here. We got to look for a little bit of slip angle through the cars. So up to the judges' criteria, if we're not happy with a little, with too little slip or a little bit of a straight line, we can penalize up to two and a half seconds, depending on how we feel about so it. So you can't just drive the course no. and break turn no, here no. and there? No, no, you can't. And then obviously, if they hit an obstacle, two and a half seconds. Nice. Straight off the bat. Okay, okay, so now I think I know what's going on now. I'm just gonna watch and try and figure the rest out. Yeah. At Cars in the Park, Mike gave me a whole lesson about two Ys, E3s, or whatever the engine codes are that I don't care about, okay? But this is what I do care about, and this is how we do buckies in Cape Town. I'm standing here with a friend of the brand, Lance, and Lance, you said that you're only gonna give me yes-no answers, so I'm only gonna ask you yes-no questions, okay, Lance? That's cool. <laughs> Do you like Drift City? Indeed. Are you going to have a good time today? Yes. Will you be back here? Indeed. So will I. Thanks, Lance. Oh, all good, man. <laughs> it's still early days for the competition. The finals still have to take place and the drivers still have to battle it out for ultimate supremacy. But for me, I'm going to take it easy, slow down, go check out the rest of the show and enjoy the rest of my day. Thanks for watching. Cheers for now. From all of us at All Things Motoring, congratulations to the winners and their teams. Coming up next week on All Things Motoring International, Mike heads to Monte Cassino in Johannesburg for King of the Whip to check out the exhilarating world of freestyle motocross. This is a show where gravity is optional. Of many, and then I don't mind when they break my train of thought. I really don't. You've got Mustangs, you've got Jason Webb, you've even got Dev done did it over here. <laughs> You're right. Oh, good, man. Lekker, man. Lekker, lekker, lekker. Yeah, we're doing things. That's what we got to do, bro. I'm actually, I'm so happy about the way this car looks driving around on the road. Oh, I can just look at it all day. I agree. Sure. The white color and seeing the handsome guy in the back, I agree. Just really is doing it for me also. <laughs> Maybe a little bit of favoritism, but I'm standing here with Dan. Ooh, loud. 
So let's get technical here. Oh, the wind is coming in hard today, folks. So if I don't look uh, perfectly manicured or anything, it's tough out here. You are so excited to get that brand new vehicle, but you're looking for a specific model and specific color. Only to be told, sorry, they are none available. Change Cars, SA's most trusted online platform, will find exactly what you need from A to B and everything in between. Change Cars, because that's what you want to do and it's who we are.